Yeah, it's exactly what you said, Young. The main difference for Trigenio is the fact it's going to have live service for the jump. You didn't say anything about balancing. You literally just said live service, which is why I'm saying live service is goaded. Yes, you can like talk about the upcoming changes, but live service is goaded. Oh, yeah, I remember what happened to cy Cyberpunk. All right, what's good, everybody? We are back. You already know I'm about to tell you guys right now. Support your boy, okay? Support him. All right, so today's video, we are talking about how bad it is to patch fighting games so often. I'm going to keep it honest with you. I think when you get a nice package, it's okay to get, like, some cool updates and stuff like that just to kind of change the game plan around. But I think when you do it too often, I think people get too comfortable and just rely on this upcoming patch. And then it kind of makes the fighting game a little bit more dual, right? So I'm going to go ahead and talk about my takes and how I feel about it. But before we jump into it, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and let me know how you guys feel about this video. And do you guys agree with me or do you guys feel like there's a different method that you guys can figure out to help fighting games great and healthy and fun? Before we have all of that, we always have to get a complete package, okay? Let's jump into the video. We need to ban the patch era, okay guys? We need to ban patch eras. The patch era of fighting game, we need to change the meta game, bro. I'll give you a little idea of what patch era is, right? So, for example, let's say, for example, I have a game. I release Battlefield. Most people who play Battlefield are pretty disappointed about how the game was. Not because of the change, but because of everything that was changed that no one asked for. <laughs> okay, trash game, but I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm following. <laughs> Hey, Kenny, I have you know that game was pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome because I spent $60 for it. But anyways, at launch, I mean, clearly that game wasn't the thing. The problem is of what patch era of games do. It's like when a company tries something like different and they're like, let's see how the people respond to it. And they will look at that as a release product. So basically, we got like a little beta about a thing that may go good or may go bad. Let's see what people look through here. And like, let's say for example, people hate it. They're like, oh, well we can fix it. We will eventually fix it. Like Melty Blood, for example, was a prime example, right? Like, hadn't they made a beta, the netcode wouldn't have been such a bad, bad thing, especially for PC players. You know, these little things could have been fixed. So you know what happened? It's like, oh, we just patch it, we just fix it. Even for like, you know, Strive, for example, like I'm really glad we got the combo maker in the game, but I felt like that should have been in the game. Also, look at Brawlhalla live service games with patches, but has constant players. I mean, the thing is about it is, it's like live service is what carries it. Let me give you for example. Every month leading into Guilty Gear, everyone was mad hype. You know why? The, because of the backyard interview. We haven't had a real backyard interview in like six, seven months. Live service games would die without patches. It depends on the game. But for fighting games, I don't think so. But I, I do agree that some games, yes, some games will die without patches. Games like Lee needs like constant updates because there's not a lot of things to do with a character. Everybody has five skills. Like, well, you have like extra skills and you have four. So like that could get pretty boring pretty quickly. I'm not saying like Lee doesn't take skills. I, I'm, I'm not saying anyway, like, there's mad variable. I'm saying fighting games has way more variable because you have to add inputs and stuff like that. Like it's a bit more, it's a bit more complex in terms of patching a game in comparison. If we had combo trials and then they added later on combo maker, I think that's, I think something like that is great. But we had nothing. We had none of that. Look what Street Fighter V had made at launch was built in a way so players had to buy the rest of the game season after season. Exactly. I felt like season one, I felt like season three was a great package, but it took two, it took three years to do so. And honestly, I don't even think it's developers' fault. I just think it's the people who, it's the leads, bro. I, I already, I clearly said it. I don't think developers have power of any of the things that we're talking about anymore. I truly don't believe they do. I'm speaking sp specifically of just like, just changing the, changing fighting games so frequently. When you could just make a solid patch and you could just have communication. The problem is we don't get any of that. We don't get like no communication. All we get is like, this is Biking. Biking has one eye. Biking like chili cheese fries. All right, guys. Well, we're going to make adjustments of fixing these bugs, and we'll see you next time. 
We don't even get a date on when next time is. We just see you next time. Yeah, did anybody did anybody ask for a new crosshair? Like generally, I'm 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 generally honest. Like, did anybody ask for it? G genuine question. I I I I didn't even I didn't even think it was a big issue until it got changed. I see some people say like, yo, it's actually helpful, but did anybody ask for it? I think it's hard to get feedback about balance changes because different between beginner and pro is too high and they complain about different characters. Yes, but again, it's all about communication. It's not, it's not even about like feedback. It's just letting us know what's what's on the plan. Like, you know, a lot of people got hyped for Strive Patch because we got news that what they were going to work on and people got mad excited. And we were excited for like three months. We were like, yo, this is great. And then we got it. I mean, granted, we were a lot of people were very happy. Some people were, you know, pretty salty. But we at least got communication. We got something to look forward to. We don't we, we don't get no dates. We just got nothing. We don't get no like streams, no nothing. Not saying they gotta be like a once a month thing, but like something. You remember when they were doing Q and A's and they used to ask all the Q and A's and stuff? When the last time they did that? Honestly. I think if people would get that, people would be more excited for the game. But we don't get anything, we just expect the worst. And when I say we, I mean like the average person. We are hoping that it's a patch because all games has given us the expectation that a patch is always going to come. Dead ass, like, it just ingrained to us. And so now we have expectation. And then, let's just say hypothetically speaking, Strive Season 2 gets announced and they're like, oh, there's no balance patches? People, gonna, people are just going to not play. Because they're so used to getting something every time when something doesn't go a specific way. And it's now it's going to that way where it's like the games are not even being launched like with nice quality accessibility. So now people are just like content of just taking little when they should be getting something way bigger than that. That's why I'm saying like I could clearly tell when a game is rushed or like when a game is like now let's just make it where we give people 40 percent of the game and we just ride it out. And I just I just hate that it's like that now because what happens is it's like people get bored fast. People get bored really fast because there's nothing to do. You gotta give everybody something to do. Even though the online is great, not everybody wants to play online. I think the 2v2 mode will bring back a lot of hype into Strive though. I'll be honest, I find I unfortunately find patches and fun. I mean, pat, the thing is, is like patches and like balancing is fine. But when it's like incomplete, like it's like bluntly incomplete. That's when I, like, cause now it like enables companies to do that. If Strive was free to play, do you think it'll be more okay with the game right now? You know, that's a good question, honestly. Uh, I think so, yeah. I think it was free to play. It wouldn't be so bad. But the problem is, is if it was free to play with the options that it had now, I don't think a lot of people would be playing the game still around this time. But people wouldn't be complaining about it at the same time. Because people would still be like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna buy this character because this character's not worth it. You know, it's still gonna be a little variable of things. It's just, the, 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 the core matter is just like communication. Just wait for Project L. You know how many people told me that? No, I'm not trying to wait for Project L. I've heard that, I've heard that, I heard people just wait for DNF, it's gonna change the game. Wait for Strive, it's gonna change the game. Wait for Street Fighter Six. it's gonna change the game. I've been told that so many times. Yeah, it's exactly what you said, Young. The main difference for Project L is the fact it's gonna have live service for the jump. You didn't say anything about balancing. You literally just said live service, which is why I'm saying live service is goaded. Yes, you can like talk about the upcoming changes, but live service is goaded. Oh yeah, I remember what happened to Cy Cyberpunk. Strive isn't that bad. We're not saying it. We see the thing is we're not comparing. It wasn't to compare Strive whatsoever. This was just an example of like what's happening. Some are terrible, some ain't that bad, but at the same time, you can't sit here and say that the quality in terms of a package hasn't fell out. This is not a comparison whatsoever. The lobby was trash, but was your character just like randomly getting stripped on a motorcycle? Not so bad. If it was, if it was, if it was going in, it was bad, but my thing is, the thing is I don't understand about like, for example, like the change that they did with the lobby system. There's like 64 setups, but the max people that could go into a lobby is only 24. So why have all of those setups available if it's not gonna be filled up? So it sounded like to me they had an idea, but it didn't work out. So they're just like, we'll just slap this on here. We'll figure it out later. Like, let's be honest here. If Rev2 had the same like lobby 
with like, you know, strides on top of you think people still play the game as much? Yes. People still play the same game as, as much as they would. It don't really change anything. But they went on like this specific direction that wasn't that bad, but they, it was just so executed poorly. And it's like, well, we'll fix it later. One thing I will say is, like I said, the tower system did good, but it also did bad. Let me tell you what it did bad about. Because now when you play other fighting games, if it has no tower system, people is just not going to play, play lobbies or tower anymore. I mean, it costs mad money to do all of this shit. But if, you, if you're going to go all in, go all in with the quality too. Like, if I was able to get, like, uh, Guilty Gear, like, Overture skin or, like, Xer skin, make that be the, the selling point. Skins with different color variations, they would, that would, they would make so much money. You know what's crazy? DOA actually did it perfectly. The problem is, is their marketing was not good. But DOA actually did it good. You know why? DOA had mad costumes. DOA costumes alone cost more than all of the DLC characters and the game combined with the Ultimate Edition. Yeah, DOA was it's three thousand dollars worth of costumes. I'm down. I, hey, I throw money on that. It's a skin. It doesn't affect or change the game. It's just you want to look cool. Skin the color would be sick too. It would help support other stuff for the game. Exactly. That's kind of why what Capcom did it. Capcom did it pretty all right, Ryan. I agree with that. The problem is just the core game was just like, it took too long to like get good. But they were trying to sell the game with no microtransactions. Remember, that's what we got fishing. Yeah, exactly. Which was weird though, because I feel like the fishing mechanic is worse than, than it is now because you can't even buy the things that you wanted. In Rev 2, you get to buy the shit that you wanted. Hey, I want to buy music. All right, well, you can buy the music with this. You had a chance to get it for cheap or buy it. They just took that away. What makes it worse too, is like you can duplicate the music that you already got. So you're actually just farming something that you may get again. Yeah, you can't buy them a stride. And the cool thing about Street Fighter 2, at least you, if you play a lot, you get to buy the characters. Granted, you know, it costs mad money, but the option was there. I think the cool thing, one thing DOA did right, is like every week they switch free characters. KI, KI, yeah, KI did it. So you at least get like a taste of it. Sound like everything Brahalla is doing right. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think the thing is about Brahalla is I just think it doesn't appeal to everybody. And graphics does play a huge part for a lot of people. Which is why when people say like, oh, I like KOF, but I, it just doesn't look fun to me because, you know, I don't like the graphics. I don't really get mad. I get mad when they sit there and say the same thing that everybody else say. Oh, it's a Dreamcast game. I'm like, bro, just say you don't like the game, dog. It, it doesn't fit you. That's fair. Yo, 81 Autumn, is your name is a song reference, right? You have a good taste, my friend. Not, say less, nothing, no, nothing more, nothing less. You have good taste. That is my morning beats. I just want you to know that. Mm -hmm.